The six cello suites of Johann Sebastian Bach remain today as some of the most beloved pieces of classical music ever written. Part of the genius of these works lies in Bach's ability to meet and overcome the challenges presented when writing for something like the cello. Unlike writing for keyboard or ensembles, writing for solo cello limits the composer texturally. So the typical intricate and complete polyphony Bach would so often write could only now be hinted at or implied. Despite this, Bach managed to write six suites which display an incredibly wide range of emotion without a sense that any compromise has been made. It is also the simplified texture which makes these works approachable to guitarists. The challenge for us is to perhaps introduce some of the harmony that was stripped away in an attempt to make up for what the guitar lacks in sustain and volume. Luckily, we have a template for this in Bach's suite for lute, BWV995, which is a reworking of his fifth cello suite. Here I've arranged and recorded three movements from suite number four for solo cello, the prelude, sarabande, and bourrées, originally in the key of E flat, which is a very unfriendly key to guitarists. I've transposed the work to the key of C so that it fits on this eight string guitar much more comfortably. And this particular eight string guitar has two extra bass strings, which are tuned to low C and low A.
The Austrian composer Franz Schubert wrote a tremendous amount of music in his short 31 years of life. Many symphonies, string quartets, piano sonatas, and perhaps most remarkably his over 600 songs or leader for voice and piano. Sadly though, like many of the great composers, Schubert wrote basically nothing for the guitar. To my knowledge, it wasn't until the composer Johann Caspar Mertz arranged a handful of these leader that Schubert's masterful writing found its way onto the guitar. I have no doubt though that Mertz got the idea to arrange these songs from Franz Liszt, who had earlier been very successful at arranging Schubert's songs for solo piano, albeit with his typical added flair and virtuosity. Here I present by far my favorite of these arrangements, Lob der Tränen, or In Praise of Tears. Like Liszt's version, the first verse is presented in a style very similar to Schubert's original, and deviates upon the repeat to a more fantastical instrumental display. Tarina wrote five works at the request of Andrei Segovia. The sonata which I present here is the largest of those works. The sonata is in three movements, fast, slow, fast, based on the classical sonata allegro form, and incorporates the harmonic languages of both Spain and France, where Tarina studied composition for nearly a decade. Tarina began composition of the sonata in 1930, and it was premiered by Segovia in Rome, 1932. 